रहीम को भजने वाली तेरे पुजारी बाबा रहीम को भजने वाली तेरे पुजारी बाबा एक सहारा एक सहारा तुम ही हो गीता तुम ही रामायण Offering our collective prayers, love and gratitude at the feet of our Divine Master, Sadhguru Sri Madhusudan Sai, respected elders, esteemed guests, brothers and sisters seated here, and everyone watching us live from around the world, Sairam, and a very good evening to you all. We will begin this evening's proceedings with an offering of love from the children of Fiji. They will offer the Ganapati Prathna and Shivopasana, followed by bhajans and songs at the Divine Lotus Feet of their most beloved Lord. Hiranyalinga Yanamaha Su 
ಭವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಬವಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶರ್ವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶರ್ವಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶಿವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಶಿವಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಜ್ವಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಜ್ವಲಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಆತ್ಮ ನಮಃ ಆತ್ಮಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪರಮ ನಮಃ ಪರಮಲಿಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸೋಮಸ್ಯ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಲಿಂಗ ಸ್ಥಾಪಯತಿ ಪಾನಿ ಮಂತ್ರ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಸತ್ಯೋ ಜಾತ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯ ಸತ್ಯೋ ಜಾತ ವೈ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಭೇ ಭೇ ನಾತಿ ಭೇ ಭವಸ್ವ ಮಾಭೋದ್ಭವಾಯ ನಮಃ ವಾಮೇವಾಯ ನಮೋ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ನಮ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ನಮೋ ರುದ್ರಾಯ ನಮ ಕಾಳಾಯ ನಮ ಕಲವಿಕಲನಾಯ ನಮೋ ಬಲವಿಕಲನಾಯ ನಮೋ ಬಲ ಪ್ರಮಥನಾಯ ನಮ ಸರ್ವೂತದಮನಾಯ ನಮೋ ಮನೋದ್ಮನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅಗೋರೇಭ್ಯೋ ತಗೋರೇಭ್ಯೋ ಗೋರ ಗೋಡತರೇಭ್ಯ ಸರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ಸರ್ವ ಸರ್ವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟು ೂಪೇಭ್ಯ ತತ್ಪುರುಷಾ ವಿಮಹೆ ಮಹಾದೇವಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ರುದ್ರ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾತ್ ಈಶಾನ ಸರ್ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಈಶರ ಸರ್ವೂತಾನ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಧಿಪತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನೋಧಿಪತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶಿವೋ ಮೇ ಅಸ್ತು ಸದಾ ಶಿವೋ ನಮೋ ಹಿರಣ್ಯಭಾವೆ ಹಿರಣ್ಯವರ್ಣಾಯ ಹಿರಣ್ಯೂಪಾಯ ಹಿರಣ್ಯಪತಯ ಅಂಬಿಕಾಪತಯ ಉಮಾಪತಯ ಪಶುಪತಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ
Shri Sai Ram. So me today I'll be singing a song titled Tightrope and it symbolizes how I will follow you everywhere, no matter what, no matter when, no matter how, no matter why. With you. 
these children deserve a big round of applause. They have learned the Vedam over the past few weeks under the guidance of Brother Arvin. We take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to everyone on this momentous day as we commence with the first satsang with our most beloved Sadhguru in the Fiji Islands for 2024. What a great blessing it is to have our dearest Sadhguru to be present here with us in Sai Prema Ashram, Fiji. Dearest Sadhguru, through your divine guidance and blessings, the mission here in Fiji continues to exponentially accelerate. You have changed the direction of this nation with your love, and you are not only changing the lives of people of Fiji, but you are also a beacon of love, hope, and peace to the entire South Pacific region. I would like to take this opportunity to thank dearest Sadhguru for establishing the Sai Prema Foundation Fiji. In 2016, the foundation was formally established and since its inception, it continues to serve the underprivileged and needy people of Fiji through projects and initiatives in the fields of healthcare, education, nutrition, and spirituality. Under the direct command of Sadhguru, Sai Prema Foundation Fiji has established the Sri Satyasai Sanjeevni Medical Center, the Sri Satyasai Sanjeevni Children's Heart Screening Center, the Sri Satyasai Sanjeevni Children's Dental Center, and of course, the crown jewel of the Pacific, the Sri Satyasai Sanjeevni Children's Hospital. In addition to these edifices of love, there are various projects which have been established. The Health on Wheels Rural Outreach Medical Program, the Be a Hero Blood Collection Drive, and Project Heartbeat, which conducts free heart screenings in rural Fiji. These have made a significant positive impact to the health and well-being of the people of Fiji. The other significant projects include the Sai Annapurna Meal Distribution Program, the Help in Kind Initiative to assist people of Fiji in the aftermath of cyclones and hurricanes, medical scholarship program to train medical professionals in the field of pediatric cardiology, human values and meditation workshops which are conducted here at the Sai Prema Ashram and around the country. This is an overall snapshot of the work of our dearest Sadhguru in Fiji. Under each of these projects, there are various other initiatives which have been established to serve the people of Fiji and the Pacific in many ways. Dear Sadhguru, our sincerest gratitude to you for your continued love, guidance, and blessings. Without your grace and blessings, none of this would have been possible. Sadhguru often teaches us to always live with the attitude of gratitude. In addition to paying gratitude to Sadhguru, on behalf of all the devotees in Fiji, we would also like to pay our deepest gratitude to our two founding trustees, who are the pillars upon which Sai Prema Foundation Fiji rests. Our two founding trustees are Mr. Mahendra Tapu and Mrs. Maya Tapu. These two incredible devotees of the Lord have given both Sai Prema Foundation Fiji and the devotees tremendous guidance, love, compassion, and most importantly, the stability and the ability to allow all of us to follow Swami's command. Our dear Mahan uncle, the father figure for all of us, is a constant source of inspiration and his wise words of wisdom and guidance have been vital in the foundation carrying out its activities successfully. Our dear Maya auntie, the mother figure for all of us, silently works behind the scenes and gives all of us the courage and the motivation to carry out the tasks assigned by Sadhguru. Her faith in Swami, her love for Swami, her one-pointed focus to follow Swami has been a constant and tremendous contributing factor towards the foundation being what it is today. 
I would humbly like to request our Fiji family to all show our deepest gratitude to our dear founding trustees with a thunderous round of applause. <laughs> this evening, Sadhguru has blessed Brother Sumit Tapu to address us all. Brother Sumit has grown into an international icon through his music and humanitarian works. But most importantly, he is the pillar of strength and inspiration who works 24 hours a day as an instrument in the mission of Sadhguru in Fiji. Since the very beginning of this mission, many have come and gone. Many have often had their highs and lows, and many have even doubted whether all what Sadhguru has commanded could be achieved. However, Brother Sumit has been like that constant northern star who works with 100% unwavering faith and confidence. Before he tells us anything, he does it himself and sets the example. He constantly inspires us and it gives us confidence knowing that if you dedicate yourself to the divine, then the divine works through you in amazing ways. And the divine has worked through Brother Sumit each and every day since the mission began. We invite Brother Sumit to address us all. Chamke nayan Damke hai man Ahu bhaagya hai ye humare Harishit hai tan Ye lagta sapan भगवन फीजी पधारे हैं हर्षित है तन ये लगता सपन भगवन फीजी पधारे स्वागतम स्वागतम् स्वागतम् भगवान् स्वागतम् 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 भगवान् जन्म जन्म के भागे उजाले जीवन सफल बाबा बनाए स्वामी अपनी शरण में ले लो भक्ति शक्ति मुक्ति भक्ति शक्ति मुक्ति दे दो कुछ ऐसे ही भगवन स्वयं अब आए हमरी द्वारे पाके ये पल ये कैसी भगवन फीजी पधारे हैं हर्षित ये तन ये लगता सपन भगवन फीजी
जी पधारे हरे हर्षित ये तन ये लगता सपन शुक्रिया 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 With love, humility, and reverence, I offer myself at the Divine Lotus feet of our most beloved Bhagwan. In April two thousand and fifteen. On the 27th of April, my father, my mother, and myself, we set foot on the holy land of Mutanahali. That first encounter with our Lord was so beautiful, was so divine. Words cannot describe what happened on that day. But one thing for sure, our lives changed. Our lives changed forever. Our lives had purpose, a newfound purpose. A few years before that, we thought we had lost the physical form of our dearest Bhagwan Baba, and those few years after his physical departure were perhaps the toughest for many, many, many of us. But when we set foot on Mudan Hali and met. With Bhagwan once again, it gave, like I said, a new purpose. And then, the most beautiful words came from his mouth in June of that year, 2015. I am going to fulfil the prayers of all of you and my children in Fiji. And I will be coming to Fiji this year itself. Begin preparations. I will come in September. On a rainy, beautiful, and divine evening, on the twenty-fifth of September, Friday, twenty-fifth September, at eight p.m. Bhagwan set foot in this tiny little island paradise that exists in the South Pacific Ocean. His first words to me: "I am so happy to be here in Fiji. I am so happy, very, very happy. But unlike others." I'm not here to have a holiday. 
I am here for holy day. I have come not just for any other reason, but for the reason to transform this land, to give this land purpose. Dear devotees, that 45 minutes that I spent with him on that Friday, the 25th of September, was a blueprint of what has happened and what will happen. A revelation that when the divine spreads his hands to embrace humanity, what can happen to a nation? He said, we will build an ashram. But not here, he said. Remember this, 2015. Not here. It will be a place on the ocean side. A beautiful land which I have already chosen, already selected many, 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 many years ago. There we'll build an ashram. But we won't stop there, he said. We'll build a medical center. A medical center which will be completely free for the people of Fiji. Offering all its services free of charge. But then we will build, remember this is 2015, he said. We will build South Pacific's first children's hospital. I have come here to save the children of Fiji. And we will also do projects in education as well. Dear devotees, 2015 he willed for all this to happen. And such projects have not happened in this nation ever. No one has thought about coming here and saving the children of Fiji in the Pacific. No one has come here ever. No one has thought of giving, giving back to this nation. And if it wasn't for you, this wouldn't happen. 100% only you. In this region, it's impossible to do anything. It's impossible to build a hospital, a, not an ordinary hospital, as he says, a pediatric cardiac super specialty hospital, which saves and serves the children of Fiji in the Pacific by mending these tiny little hearts, giving them open heart, life-saving surgeries, completely free of charge. You know when this project was, well, this deserves a round of applause. When this project was announced, nobody believed us. They thought we were mad. They thought, they thought we had gone cuckoo. They thought we have no idea what's to be done. And trust me, if it wasn't for our Lord, this would not have happened. And that heart, which you all see, that red heart, which sits on the foreshore of Suva City, is not only transforming these children who, this, who have heart disease of holes in their hearts. It's not only saving their lives, it is changing this nation, dear devotees. It is transforming this nation. That red heart is giving people hope, love, faith in humanity. It talks of compassion. It's melting hearts. And how fortunate we are, how fortunate we are that we are part of something so divine, so incredible, so amazing. Isn't it? How fortunate we are. And this fortune doesn't only lie with the devotees of Fiji. He speaks of this one world, one family. 
Vasudeva Kutumbakam, where each and every one of us, you are here today from USA, from Canada, from Australia, from New Zealand, from India. We've all come together and we're a part of something so incredible. We're part of something so amazing. And we are so blessed to have this opportunity. And how thankful we are to him for giving us this opportunity to be a part of something which is, dear devotees, changing this nation. It is giving people compassion, spreading compassion, giving people hope. You know, when you see these children coming in to the hospital, you see their families grief-stricken. And when incredible divine instruments like Dr. Sean said, he's sitting here, open their chest, mend it, and him and his team look after these children with so much of love. You know, the faces glow like the beautiful full moon which is there tonight. And the families are happy. And they go to the communities. It gives people hope that someone is thinking of us. That someone is thinking of the voiceless. These people do not have an opportunity to otherwise have a life. And this ashram is doing his own spiritual magic. How, what a divine place this is. When we all gathered, as we took photographs with the Lord, the sunset was glowing, giving its own majesty. The golden hue setting over this magnificent ashram. So over these next divine days that we have here in Fiji, as we celebrate the second anniversary of this hospital tomorrow, take in all this love and let us be grateful, eternally grateful for what he gives us. He has gone, our oh dear Sadhguru, I call him Bhagwan. He is God. He goes, he has traveled from home to home, from town to town, city to city, country to country, all year round. All he does is for the sake of humanity. And today, just a few of us sit here and watch online. Dear devotees, what an opportunity we have to be a part of something so incredible. I've seen what is coming. The next eight years, if you think what he has done over the past ten years is glorious. Oh my God. Wait till you see what's coming. He will transform this world. Single-handedly, hundred years from now, thousand years from now, people will look back at this, this time. They look back till these, these moments and say, this being changed the world. It will happen, is up to us. We have the opportunity to be a part of something divine. Do not lose this opportunity. He has given this opportunity to us. Do not waste it. Every single day, let us do all that we can. All that we can to be a part of this. All that we can to fulfill what he is out to achieve. We owe it to him, we owe it to our master to be the best instruments, instruments that we can be, the best. Let us not be obstacles in his mission. Let us be like that flute. Let him play the music that he wants to play. Let him play the divine music that he wants to play. 
Let us be those divine instruments so that He can do what He wants to do. And if we can just do that, this world will change. This world will change. Thank you. Thank you is not enough. Thank you is such a small word. I'm sorry that I cannot say anything more than that. But you have changed our lives. You've given us purpose. You've redeemed our lives. You redeemed each and every one of us. We were clueless, rudderless, without sails. You've given us wings. Wings so we can fly high on this earth as we hold your hand and we fly across the world. Please keep us with you so that our life continues to be beautiful. I cannot imagine my life without him. I cannot for even one second imagine my life without him or this mission. And I pray you please keep us with you. Thank you, everyone. Whenever we come to Fiji, it's like homecoming for us. The people here look after every one of us like a family, more than a family. And I find it very comforting to invite devotees from around the world to come to Fiji. The only second place after Mudden Ali, where I feel that devotees will be looked after and whatever I say will be done. It has been so for these many years. And it wouldn't be an overstatement if I say that from the very beginning, of course, all the devotees in Fiji who eventually learnt about all the things that were happening, it was Sumit who placed his complete faith in this divine mission. And if I have to simply look back and see, of all those people who were around the world, not so close to me in Mudden Halli, who could see things for themselves every day and therefore develop faith, but somebody from a very far away land like Fiji developed complete faith and placed his complete trust in me and the mission. It was Sumit and it is Sumit. <laughs> and with him came all the people, the family. His wife is here, parents are here, in-laws are here, kids are here and extended family of all the devotees in Fiji, they came along. Riding on this one faith of Sumit that what he is saying is true. And then they had their own experiences, their own understanding, they developed their own faith over a period of time. But if Sumit was not there in the first place to completely trust, believe and commit himself, I do not think this mission would have been possible in Fiji. There are so many countries we visit, tens of countries across all continents almost. 
everywhere i don't go and tell build a hospital build this an ashram build this build that in some places i just give them small tasks in some places bigger tasks but to the people of fiji i really give a mountain to carry today is hanuman jayanti birthday of lord hanuman who became immortal even though he was born a monkey he went all the way to become equal to god and is worshiped in every home for what he did for the sake of lord rama and when lord rama trusted him with the life of his brother lakshmana who was dearer to him than even mother sita and told hanuman come what may we have to save lakshmana for i may find another wife like sita but i will never find a brother like lakshmana it was so important for shri rama to have lakshmana back when he had fainted hanuman flew all the way and brought back not just a herb or a plant or a tree but a whole mountain it was given to hanuman alone shri rama did not tell anybody else he went to hanuman and told you alone can save lakshmana bring that mount sanjeevani her and today when shri satyasai sanjeevani children's heart hospital stands tall in this tiny island nation in the really in the middle of nowhere it is this sumit hanuman who managed to bring that sanjeevani to <laughs> fiji was it easy not at all it was a very difficult task to build a super speciality hospital in a remote island nation like this which in all its history never had a super speciality hospital like this one and run it totally free of cost by bringing the right kind of medical professionals running the infrastructure maintaining it getting the equipment from around the world and then looking after the patients like your own family all at no cost to the patients i have no doubt that this sanjeevani is a bigger mountain than that sanjeevani of treta yuga that sanjeevani saved one lakshmana this sanjeevani saves hundreds of lakshmanas and all those children are dear to me like lakshmana was dear to rama so when every child is saved here you are serving that lord rama lord sai rama by protecting and giving a new lease of life to every child so much i can speak about the devotees of fiji because it's not just about the hospital when i said ashram has to be built we were driving past this road in pacific harbor and i pointed towards this and said this is where the ashram is going to come look for the land they simply place their trust no arguing no suggesting no advising no debating they just said okay this is the place we will look for one and they found they built and year after year every year i gave a new task they achieved that task and through the covid times when the whole world came to a grinding halt nothing was moving there was no shipping happening no trade happening no logistics in those days this hospital was built so this task of sanjeevani hospital in fiji is bigger than the task of carrying a mountain on your shoulders but they have achieved it because the unity amongst all of them the purity amongst all of them made divinity come and help them that is how this hospital has come up so i promised them every year i will come in this year except the covid year which we could not come every year i will come and be with you during this time and i haven't broken that promise i have been coming every year during this time bringing devotees because they kept the promise so i have to keep my promise of coming back every year and every year i come i give them more task they keep on achieving it that motivates me to come back again the next year to see what they have done with this year it's an example for the whole world they do not have big resources like big developed nations they don't have hundreds and thousands of 
volunteers and devotees like in India. They do not have deep pockets like big philanthropists in the world. They are just simple family people who have come together and given whatever they could, tana, mana, dhana, everything, for the sake of this cause. They had no expectations from, only one expectation, you come back every year and see us once. That's the only expectation they had. They had no other demand, no expectations, nothing. Then I also told the devotees from Australia, New Zealand, America, Singapore and several places to support them. Because it is not possible for them alone to do it. And they all supported. So I am grateful to all those devotees also on behalf of the children of Fiji. <laughs> that little army of Rama, which is building bridge between life and death for the children of Fiji and South Pacific. Now children come from many nations, not just from Fiji, but they come from nearby nations too and they get treated for free. It makes me really very happy. As Sumit said, what is a life without a purpose? And what could be a greater purpose than to give life to another person and give a life of purpose to another person? When these children grow up, they will be children of God. They will carry forward this legacy of love and service in their own way. And their grateful parents will dedicate them for the betterment of the society. And the whole new generation of Fijians will grow, totally transform generation of Fijians, which will bring greatness and goodness to this society. And that's how the world will get transformed. That is the investment each one of us is making. Today when I see these little kids, they are my VIPs. They learnt all this to please me. They can't run the hospital, they can't go and do surgeries, they cannot manage the foundation, they can only sing songs, learn Veda and present that with such great devotion. This is what is happening in Fiji. A new generation is coming up and they'll take forward this work and this legacy for all times to come. If Sri Rama could boast that he had the army of monkeys and bears and squirrels and other animals, birds and so on, with which he won a war, imagine my army of these Fiji children and Fiji devotees. They are far, far superior in their devotion and dedication. So they will take forward this work. Today also is the eve of 24th April. And all the time we are, when we think of 24th April, we think of what we have lost and what we have gained. Sumit said, life felt like a burden. They felt lost, for there was no idea where they were heading now. That, now that 24th April had happened in 2011. And then with divine grace, they are again back in the mission, in a bigger way. And I always say, 24th April cannot be a day of mourning and recollecting and a, a reliving of the past. It has to be a vibrant present and a brilliant future for all. That is what we should do. And this 24th April, tomorrow, we are celebrating the anniversary of the hospital. We will have the Prime Minister of Fiji come over and commemorate this occasion with gifting some more certificates to the children who have been treated recently in this last mission under Dr. Sean and his wonderful team. We also will commit ourselves to carrying forward this legacy of love all, serve all by thinking that the whole world is one family. Everybody is our own. And that is how we will transform the world. And believe you and me, the big revolutions, the big movement, the big transformations in the world did not happen because all the world participated in it. A few good people with great conviction, goodness and courage to act it in their daily lives, they transformed the world. And so a handful of men and women who are committed to this cause of goodness is good enough for God to achieve what He wants to achieve. And that is why we are all here, to recommit ourselves to this idea 
that we shall love, we shall serve as long as it lies in us and we should treat everyone as our very own, as our brothers and sisters. And that is how the world will become a better place for this generation to grow. Tomorrow I may not find much time to speak because there is the Prime Minister and many other people. It was brought to my notice that there are adults, there are grown-ups who also are dying of heart problems. And we must do something about it. This was also mentioned to me by the Deputy Prime Minister earlier. We will try, I said. We will try what we can do. And I hope that this year, as we celebrate the second anniversary, we will also take steps to provide whatever support we can for even the grown-ups, the breadwinners of the families who are suffering from cardiac problems. And we will see what is best in our mind that we can do with the government and with all of you together. For every time a father who has a heart attack dies, he leaves behind a family to fend for itself. He leaves behind helpless children. He leaves behind a wife who may not be able to look after the family like he did. And the whole family is pushed into poverty. And when I promise we will see, what we will do what we can. And hopefully, in a couple of months from now, we will also acquire the other land which is next to the hospital and also build a training and development center for pediatric cardiac as well as adult cardiac skills to help the doctors and nurses and paramedics in Fiji to upskill themselves and help themselves and their people right here. Under our medical school, we will grant scholarships for all these Fijian medical professionals to get trained and upskill themselves and help the people here. All that will happen in times to come. As Sumit said, it is just the beginning of a great glorious chapter in Sai mission. And this is going to be one of the most powerful missions that have ever happened in the world. This will transform the world. I have no doubt about it. But I cannot do it alone. He cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. But together we all can do it. That's my conviction. That's why we all have to be in it. With all our might. With all our love. With all our heart. And that's when things will start changing for the world. Starting right here in this ashram. In this land. In the beginning I said build an ashram and they built a hall and two green rooms and they gave me one room to live. I said, I, I kept quiet and I said build now a medical center, they built the medical center, I said, build a pediatric heart hospital, they built the pediatric hospital. I told Sumit, you are living in small apartments, I cannot come and stay here in these apartments because a lot of people stay. Every time I have to catch the lift and go up and down, there is somebody waiting for the lift. I think you should have a house. They didn't have a courage to build the house. Imagine they've been living here for decades. They were born and brought up here. The father was born and brought up here. But they never built a house for them. So I said, first you build the house, then I will. I got their house built. I got the hospital built. I got the ashram built. And finally, my home is built right behind this. It's their gift to me. They said, come and stay longer in Fiji. I said, I don't need a home to stay longer. I just need a heart which is full of love and compassion for people and I will come and stay there forever. And that kind of heart is what is our red heart that represents our work in Fiji. Every time everybody passes, this heart does not just talk about heart hospital. It talks about a heart that has love and compassion in it. That has space for everyone in the world. And it expands and expands and expands to accommodate more people with it. That is the heart where God resides. And that is why Fiji is special. That is why this work is special to me. I know you have made many sacrifices. You have given away a lot of your time, a lot of your energy, so much of your resources. You are all young people, most of you who have a career to build, who have families to look after, yet you have taken that leap of faith and done more for somebody else's family, somebody else's children, somebody else's careers. And that sacrifice is what truly 
touches my heart. And I bless with all my heart that may this land of Fiji grow and prosper, not just economically, but in love and compassion for all mankind. May you be the leading lights for such a transformation that is about to come upon this beautiful land of Fiji. May you bring that joy, peace, that kindness and compassion that is God into the lives of these poor Fijians. May us all work together to gloriously celebrate the life and the teachings of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba as we recommit ourselves again on the anniversary of the hospital and the ashram and all the work in Fiji. May we all become those Hanumans of Lord Rama who would do anything and everything for his sake, for his people's sake. And as I was listening to Hanuman Chalisa before coming here, there is a line, Vidyavana Gudi Atti Chatura Rama Kaja Karibeko Atura. You are very intelligent, oh Hanuman, Vidyavan, you are very learned. Guni, you are full of good qualities. Ati Chatur, you are very clever, intelligent. But for what sake all this? Rama Kaja Karibeko Atura. Because you are always eager to serve Lord Rama. With all your intelligence, might and whatever you have, you are always there to serve Lord Rama. You are always eager, waiting for the next command. And that is what I want on this Hanuman Jayanti for all of us to think. We don't go to God to ask God what you can do for us. We go to God to tell God, tell us what you want us to do for you. That is the way of Hanuman. And I feel so comfortable that even before they ask, I feel like telling them, do this next. Because I believe that they will do it. Even if it is difficult, almost impossible, they will still do it because they love me so much and they believe in me. And so I too love, it, love them so much and I totally believe in them. I trust them with all my work, with all my name, with all my mission because I believe that they truly can carry this forward. Tomorrow we will meet again in this city center. That's where the event is. You'll also meet little children who have been healed, cured and they're back on their feet. You'll also meet many dignitaries and friends from Fiji. And as I said, tomorrow we may not have another function of our own. It is more of a formal function, but May within our hearts, as we light the lamp tomorrow morning at our altars, remind ourselves that we must light that lamp in our heart and keep it burning. A lamp that represents hope, love, compassion and commitment to doing good to more people in more ways. In the name of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba on this Mahasamadhi day. That is our legacy, that is our commitment, that is our purpose in life. May you all lead very happy, joyful life of purpose where every day you touch and transform many more lives and take them onto this path of Godhood. May your families be happy and healthy so that you can do whatever you can for everyone. May there be peace and prosperity. May there be joy and happiness in this land of Fiji and for all the Fijians. May you be a blessing in your own way. With these words, and special blessings to this ne next generation missionaries who are right now very bored of my speech. But they have had the patience to sit through the entire program. That itself shows that they are ready, they are getting ready. Who is going to look after my mission and the whole hospital and everything? Raise your hand. Yeah, see. All of them. Very good. That's Mira 1, this Mira 2. There are two Miras in this group. They all want to look after. Arvind is our student. He was the first boy from our university. I posted in a mission outside India. He's been here for last one and a half years. He's assisting 
the foundation in whatever way he can. And in the coming years, I'm going to post many more of our graduates, postgraduates from the university, from the medical school, from the nursing and paramedical school into all these hospitals around the world. And they will help you to carry forward this mission. I'm very happy about it. All I can say is, I can't wait to come back again to Fiji. <laughs> so till then, as they say, Bula Vinaka. request the Fiji families to come forward, please, in, in the groups of families, please, if you can come, Kamresh uncle, Jyoti auntie, the family, please come up. Yes. Yes. Go, go, go. Jyoti auntie. Rajin Bhai Varshwin, Sushila Ben Uma, Jignasha Saish and Prem. Pratin Sonia, Sharda Ben Mira. John, Jeannie, Jason, and Arti, Peel. Originally from New Zealand, now in Fiji. Uncle Indra Dev. Rita Ben Desai. Nandini Men. Robin James, Notre James. Ravi. He's a caretaker of the ashram, Ravi. <laughs> Brother Arvind, who's now Fijian. Mahendra Maya, Kripali, 
Sai Shamira. Because I come.
Jai Guru, Sat Guru, Shri Madhusudana Sai. 